the euler maclaurin formula was discovered independently by Euler and Maclaurin. Uh, it's a way to solve the summation of any function. So while Fallhaber formulas can only solve summations involving polynomial functions, uh, this formula can solve it for any function. Uh, of course, it does work better if the uh, function uh, has a derivative that terminates to a constant value. So let's uh, work on solving this. So it has four main components, if you see. So it's got one, two, three, and four. Uh, when you sum them together, you'll get your final answer. Um, let's work on the first part. You can see the first part is actually just integrating the function um, with respect to its variable uh, from the lower limit m to the upper limit n, which is the same as the original summation. Um, solving that gives you the first component. So let's look at the second component. This is the quantity uh, f of n, so your function with your upper limit plugged in, uh, minus f of m, which is your function with the lower limit plugged in, that difference times negative one half. So this third component is the most complicated, and it involves a summation. So here, it's actually in terms of k, the variable k, and it goes until p. So p is your upper limit. Uh, this variable is defined as the ceiling function of another variable q, plus 1 over 2. Uh, this Q is actually the number of times we have to differentiate F in order to get a constant value. So for a quadratic this would be 2 times because you take it into a linear function and then you take it into a constant. Um, so if we think of, to derive this equation, we know that if we plug this into a value here, we know that 2p minus 1 has to equal q. So, because this is 2k minus 1, which we have these values up here. So, if we take that, we can find q plus 1 over 2 has to equal to p. But remember, this has to be taken at a... Uh, an integer value. So we'll round up. That's the ceiling function. Um, this is a way in order to uh, kind of limit the number of um, summation terms you would take. Um, of course you can uh, use, uh, use a much higher number but you'd be taking a lot of values at zero because at a certain point this value here would actually converge to zero. Um, so you just be adding zero each time. So this is a way to kind of make the process a little bit quicker. Um, so k equals one through your term p here. Then you wanna, that is of uh, the Bernoulli number of two k. So for the first k value, it'd be the second Bernoulli number, um, which is one sixth. And I'll have a chart up uh, that shows them. And you wanna divide that by the quantity two k factorial. Uh, you wanna multiply that quantity times the function differentiated 2k minus 1 times and with n plugged in minus the function differentiated 2k minus 1 times with n plugged in and that uh, that difference there multiplied by the uh, Bernoulli part of it uh, and that's how you get the third quantity of it so finally you have the fourth component of it which is actually just f of n so your original function with n plugged in your upper limit so let's try an example. Um, so for simplicity, we're just going to use a polynomial function. Um, this way, we wouldn't have to see when that third component um, uh, converges to zero. Uh, this way, it actually terminates to a constant value when differentiated a number of times. Uh, and we can use our uh, the p equals q plus 1 over 2 of the ceiling function. Uh, we can use that rule for a polynomial since it actually does converge to a uh, constant when uh, differentiated. So here we have the summation from 1 to 5 of i cubed minus 2i squared plus 1. Um, so let's break it down into our four terms. So the first one we're going to have um, it integrated the function. So let's say we have x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 with respect to x. So what is this going to be? This is going to be uh, x to the fourth over 4 minus 
uh, we're going to do 2x cubed over 3 plus x. And that is going to be taken from 1 to 5. So 5 to the 4th, uh, that's going to be 625. Minus 5 to the 3rd, that's going to be 125 times 2, that's 250. 250 over 3. And then we're simply just going to add 5. And that's going to be subtracted by 1 fourth minus 2 thirds plus 1. So plugging this value into our calculator, we see that this is going to be equal to 77 and a third. So the next component is going to be negative one half the function at its upper limit, which is going to be 5, minus the function at its lower limit, which is going to be 1. So this is going to be negative one half times, if we plug in 5, right, we get 125 minus 50, which is going to be 75 plus 1. So it's going to be 76. Minus, if we plug in 1, we get 1, minus 2, which is negative 1, plus 1 is going to be 0. We get negative 76 over 2, which is going to be negative 38. So now we have the third term. Uh, this is where a lot of the work comes in. So now we have the summation when k equals 1, 2. Let's offer the p value. Um, so we know p is going to be q plus 1 over 2, c line function. Q, how many times do we have to differentiate this function to get a constant? Uh, we can do a 1 to get a quadratic, 2 to get a linear equation, and 3 to get a constant. So that's just going to be 3. Uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. We divide that by 2, it's going to be 2. Ceiling function of 2 is just going to be 2. So our p value is going to be 2. So p is going to be 2. Then we have the Bernoulli number 2k over 2k factorial times the function differentiated 2k minus 1 of n, which is really just 5. So I'll just put a 5 there. And then that minus the function differentiated 2k minus 1 again uh, at m, which is just going to be 1. So let's expand this. So let's plug in uh, 1 first. So the Bernoulli number 2 is going to be 1 sixth. So that's 1 sixth over 2 factorial, which is going to be 2. So 1 sixth over 2 is 1 twelfth. So then we want to multiply that by plug in 1, 2k minus 1. That's going to be uh, the function differentiated one time at 5. So let's find out what the derivative is going to be. So it's going to be 3i squared minus 4i and that constant goes away. So if we plug in 5 for that, we get 25 times 3, which is going to be 75, minus 5 times 4, which is going to be 20. And 75 minus uh, 20 is going to be 55. So let's do that here. 55 minus, let's plug in 1. If we plug in 1, we get 3 minus 4, which is going to be negative 1. Now let's work on the second term. So the fourth Bernoulli number, because B2K, right? So it's going to be the fourth Bernoulli number. Um, it's going to be, let's see, it's going to be negative 1 30th. So negative 1 over 30, that quantity over 2 times 2 factorial. So 4 factorial is going to be 4 times 3, tw uh, 12 times 2, 24. So that over 24. We're going to multiply that by... If you plug in 2 here, we get, that's going to be the third derivative. So we already have the first one here. Let's take the second one. Um, that's going to be 6i minus 4. Um, now let's take the third derivative. Uh, 
um, that's just going to be 6. So, if we plug in 6, we're just going to get a 0 value here. So it's going to be 6 minus 6, which is a 0 value. This term actually cancels out. Um, so what we're left with is 1 12th of 55 plus 1, which is 56. So let's see what 50... What is it? 56 over 12 is? It's going to be 4 and 2 thirds. So now we know that this term is going to be 4 and 2 thirds, and that's going to be just a positive value there. And that's what we have for our third component. So finally, let's do our last term, which is just the function at its upper limit, which is 5. So f of 5, which is going to be 125 minus 50 plus 1, which is going to be 75 plus 1, or 76. So now we know that the summation from 1 to 5 of i cubed minus 2i squared plus 1 is going to be equal to 77 and a third minus 38 plus 4 and 2 thirds plus 76. And if we add this up, we get 120, which is the correct answer. So, of course, we could have used Fallhaber's formula for the um, third power of a function uh, to solve that, but um, this is just another approach to it. Uh, this is just a simple example for that. Uh, you could use other functions for this, just the only thing that makes it complicated is that um, the function here, the third term, would not actually terminate at a single p-value. So you would have to find uh, if it converges to zero, and if it does, then you can use it uh, to find the exact answer.